A neat and tidy 6-1 victory for the Edmonton Oilers at the hands of the Anaheim Ducks. Good afternoon, everybody. Tom Gazzola, Joaquin Gage, and YouTube Trev with you for the Oil Stream post-game show right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Uh, a very pleasant afternoon if you're an Oiler fan as they continue to roll in uh, in what will be a fun, I think, and exciting uh, end of the stretch drive into the postseason. So we're going to break it all down with our good friend and analyst, Joaquin Gage, and for Matty Cassian, Trev holding things down back at EST HQ. And, uh, of course, text us, 780-218-9999. And uh, via the nasty chat, as always, get in there. Uh, hit the thumbs up on your way in, please. And thank you as we break this one down. Edmonton uh, sweeping the series se season series against the Anaheim Ducks and doing it convincingly let's get Joaquin Gage on here off a fresh start uh and a great performance on the broadcast after an even better performance on the pregame show in my opinion uh well, Joaquin, technical difficulties oh so, yeah Tom. evidently evidently Joaquin uh all right the Gage is good to go and uh six one the Oilers win it over the Ducks I don't think we we're at all surprised with the result but I think a lot of satisfaction with the method in which the Oilers made that happen, Gager. Yeah, I was I was surprised to say the least. Like just the way they started, Tommy. I, I mentioned it in the in the pregame show. Just the Oilers usually trying to feel things out. That wasn't the case tonight. Like they they established the type of style that they were going to play, um, limiting the Ducks' chances, scoring on theirs. Uh, Connor McDavid on a, a completely another level tonight with his play. It's almost he was going to make sure that this game was going to go the way the Oilers wanted to, right? They, he wasn't going to be denied. Um, great game again by Calvin Pickard. Like mm -hmm. um, I was talking with Gene and and he was asking some, you know, we and even with the crew, we were at, we were talking some some different goalie scenarios and. It's very difficult when maybe you're you're on the sidelines for a bit. You have to come into a game. Uh, the rebound control sometimes is just it, it's it's tough to get a handle on it. Mm -hmm. Not the case. Like this guy's a black hole. Like he's swallowing everything up. No second chance opportunities. Granted, it, it was the Ducks, but I think the most impressive thing is the fact that they came off that big emotional high win and followed it up against a lesser team, a team that they should beat. And it uh, and to have a performance like that, that's just a mature hockey team. Pickard picking up his 11th victory of the season in his 18th game. Pretty good coming on in relief of Jack Campbell earlier this season. And he has been a stalwart there for the Edmonton Oilers in goal when he's gotten the nods. So with that being said, let's go into tonight's scoring summary and game stats as the Oilers Hand the Ducks a 6-1 defeat. Uh, Adam Henrik, the former Duck, making it 1-0. Just 3-47 in Henrik's 22nd goal of the season. Third as a member of the Oilers on a nice play by Leon Dreisaitl. Matthias Ekholm, who had a big offensive night, uh, also getting in on the fun, picking up the second assist there. Henrik, uh, that was, I'd say, his nicest goal as an Oiler, uh, taking his own rebound and bearing it by John Gibson and uh, you know, the Oilers score on their third shot. So they got the start that they wanted on Henrik's 22nd McDavid, Connor McDavid, a big night for him as well. 28th goal of the season to make it two nothing at 14, 15 Zach Hyman, the lone helper on that one. And then before the period was up at 16, 16 Matthias at home with the blast, his eighth of the year from Sam Carrick, who made a nice play on the wall. Also the former duck playing against his old team for the first time. And Vinny DeHarnay picking up his ninth apple of the season. 3 nothing Edmonton after one. In the second, it would be Connor McDavid again, this time on the power play. Second of the night, 29th of the season. The assist to Dreisaitl and Bouchard at 9.28. That tied McDavid for the league lead in points. And then before the period was up, you had Warren Fogle being sent in on a breakaway by Matthias Ekholm. Nice feed by Ekholm. Fogel buries his 17th. DeHarnay, his second assist of the game, 10th of the season. That one coming at 15, 57, five zip oil after two. And now the question was, can they get the shutout for Pickard? Well, the answer was no. Uh, but first, before we get to the Ducks goal, Zach Hyman scores his 
52nd of the year. McDavid picking up his 96th assist, four away from 100. Almost there, a fourth guy in NHL history, if he can get to 100 to ever do that behind Lemieux, Gretzky, and Bobby Orr. Of course, the Hyman goal coming at 7.06 of the third, 6 nothing Edmonton. And then before time was up at 15.42 on the power play, Alex Kalorn scores his 15th goal of the season from Cam Fowler and Frank Vitrano on the redirection. Edmonton 6. Anaheim 1 is your final. Shots on goal, 37-22 in favor of the Oilers. The face-off dot, all Oilers as well, 63.8% to 36.2. Power play goes 1 for 3, and the PK 1 for 2. Uh, block shots, Edmonton 13 Anaheim 14 uh, hits 32 18 in favor of the Ducks. Giveaways 12 apiece, takeaways eight apiece. But this one, Gager, all Oilers. And uh, you, you and I were talking on our way back from the arena uh, to the satellite studios. Well, if they could just hang on and not let Anaheim score, that would be wonderful. Not the case, though. And, and you, as an old goalie, I, I can appreciate you bringing that up. And I was with you on it. Well, you saw a little bit of extra. Um, Connor McDavid with uh, Pickard at the end of the game, you know, and there was probably a little bit of a, hey, you know, sorry about we couldn't get you that thing because we all know what happened when he got pulled out of the game before and kind of yes. lost the lost the O. So, but team shutout. It's I th again I I allude to the the maturity of this group. Um, it's always great to get a shutout, regardless if you have a bonus for it or not, Tommy, but. Um, I think Calvin Pickard, the way he played, like that was a very solid game. And sometimes games like that are even more difficult to 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 stay stay in. You know, your yeah. you, you, your team's dominating, but there's going to be a chance coming the other way at some point. And his mental focus is really really high for a guy that you know a backup goalie. It's again, I I've said it tons. I said it on the broadcast. What he's done this year as the Oilers number two guy is amazing. I mean, we, we, for years, how, how much do we hear about go Oilers goaltending for the past few, all, all, all the time, right? You haven't heard it in months. Like yeah. it seems like the, those, those demons of, of inconsistent, I don't want to say goal thing, but inconsistent goals allowed. Maybe that's yes. a better, the 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 backbreaker goals that were allowed at times and with uh, with uh, some Oiler goalies in the past were just odd and you just don't see that yet they're making um, the other team do something special to get the puck past them and that's that's a really good position to be in going into the playoffs. I like how you <clears throat> describe that you're making the other you're forcing the other team to do something. Whereas, yeah, you're not giving them a gift where, you know, we were seeing that on the first shots of games. Uh, at times it felt like there was a stretch of seasons where the first shot of the game against any Oilers goaltender, I think it goes back as far as Devin Dubnik, Gager, yeah. uh, Dubnik to Victor Faust and Ben Scrivens at times, as well as uh, Cam Talbot had a run where the first one was getting by him. I think Laurent Brassois was victimized by that. And then obviously Mike Smith, Miko Koskinen, that was something that uh, we were talking about too much. And uh, you're right. That is making the other team do something special to score. Love the way you describe that. All right. 780-218-9999. You can text us. We want to hear from you and then get into the nasty chat as well. The Oilers 6-1 winners over the Anaheim Ducks sweeping the season series. Edmonton improving. It's record to 45, 23, and 4 on the season. Good for 94 points. Let's go to Windermere Matt, who kicks us off. Windermere Matt says, love it. Simple as that. This is exactly what should have happened, and it did. Well done, Oilers. The person that texted in last postgame show about the Oilers not shutting it down for their goalies to get the shutout is not going to be happy. I hope this game gives 73 a little more confidence. Happy Easter, EST boys, and all the nasties from Windermere Matt. Number 73, Vinny D'Arnais. You and I talked about him a little bit, Gager, on the pregame show. Stetcher gets in for Cody Cece, who's under the weather. We will also talk about Brett Kulak, who didn't finish the game. Um, what did you see from Vinny D'Arnais, and how did you like Stetcher's game? What I – well, I liked it, to say that. I, 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 was, uh, I was upset with the penalty that the, that the Ducks took to, to take away uh, Stetcher's first goal. Like, yeah. that was a tap-in. Um, 
I like the fact that there was an injury and they they had to make adjustments on the fly tonight. This is the first you'd you'd have to say kind of this is the first kind of game that there was adversity for for the Oilers defensemen, you right. know, and they and I know they played against a Ducks team that were more interested in in their the new tailor maids that are probably coming in in a few weeks than they actually look great. playing. <laughs> but um, they looked good. They looked composed. Vinny had a really good game. I watched if the the first two passes were tape to tape. Right, he was he was uh, he was processing on a on the level that we saw from the beginning of the season. So you know maybe that injury. It's an, on a finger is always nagging, right? Yes. You, it's constantly there and it probably still doesn't feel great. But um, no, I, I liked his game. I liked the, the cohesive, cohesiveness of, of other players playing with different, you know, in different situations. Um, the Oilers D, you know, first time the adversity came in and they, they passed with flying colors. They, they didn't allow the Ducks to feel good about themselves throughout the whole game. Uh, yeah, the, the finger thing, Gager, like I, in the locker room the other day, someone was talking to Vinny and he's like, Hey, I'm not going to talk about my finger. So I, you know, I don't think he wants to use it as an excuse either. Yeah. And uh, today, maybe, maybe the first time in, in the last week or so where you're like, Oh, okay. You know, he's, he's looking better. And I know it's Anaheim and I keep that in mind saying it, but, uh, regardless, I, I think Gager, when you're pointing to the good stuff that Vinny did. It's because the process was there and and it should transfer over to tougher competition in theory, I would say, if that's fair. You hope so. And it, and it should, you know, it's uh, no, he had a really strong game, a real strong game. I was, uh, there was one, I really had the ISO cam. I think he had to back check or came across to, to grab his check and the way he closed the gap, took the puck away, um, you know, didn't overplay it and just a, like eliminated a scoring chance right, right there. And he was kind of caught out of position at the start and for him to recover, that's how I know a guy's kind of, you know, especially on the defensive side, he's, he's feeling it and, and feels good about it. So that was, that was my sign that, okay, he's, he's back to where we saw. Cause I think you could say over the last few weeks, he's, his game hasn't been where it was at uh, when the Oilers were on that big street. Yeah, no, that's totally fair. It, it's funny. I, I made the, I'm not really a joke, but observation, let's say that uh, we were giving him heaps of praise uh, two, three weeks ago. And then he had a couple of tough goes and all of a sudden it's like, get him out of there. <laughs> Come on. Let's, let's, let's take a step back. Well, let's we, look we at get, this. We get, uh, we get accustomed to certain things, Tommy, and we see the progression. You can't say that, like over the past, what I think he just passed the hundred game mark yep. as a defenseman, yep. you know. And you gotta, if you look at where he was and where he is now, um, I'm sure we'll have discussions over the summer of what the Oilers are going to do with Vinny because, you know, <clears throat> he's a very serviceable, I would six seven defenseman in the NHL now. That's going to be sought after. So. Oilers really have to make a decision on what to do with him. And same with Vinny, you know, what, I mean, if there's something to stay with the team that brought you to the dance, first of all. Um, but you know, the, the, the business side of this game rears its ugly head and, um, the, the lure of the, of the dollars sometimes, uh, especially in his case, a guy that's battled through the minors. Now yep. he's kind of, I don't want to say established, but he's, if the door's closing, his his foot's wedged in there, and you can't close it at this point. You know so, he's ready to to burst in there, and so yeah, yeah I, I'd like to see him stay in Oilers for sure. I think he fits in really well here. Uh, the The business side of it will, I think, take care of itself. But uh, he is certainly I, Gager. I think he's established himself as an NHLer, and he has yeah. a certain asset. Uh, that he breaks to the team and he's been great on the PK uh, for the most part, although Edmonton's PK this year has been very Jekyll of, and Hyde with him on it. But uh, he does take up a lot of space out there. And for a guy that's six foot seven, uh, has done a good job of adapting. Not perfect, not perfect at all, but he has done a good job. All right. Text us 780 218 9999. Of course, nasty chat. Keep doing your thing. I wonder if Cass is in there yelling at people. 
maybe. Otherwise, he's doing Easter stuff. Speaking of Easter stuff, Babbage Stash chimes in, says, Tommy, I've been tied up doing Easter stuff all day today. Missed the game. Only kept track on my phone. On my way to, uh, to the next stop, so you have to have the important task of giving me the complete breakdown so okay, I can be a part of a dinner conversation today. Let's hear all about <laughs> it. Happy Easter, Babbage Stash. We got you, Babbage Stash. We got you. Eden says, afternoon, boys. Good win today. Henrik and Ekholm have really been contributing as of late. Hopefully, Kulak is okay, but do you guys think the preference would be to play Stetcher or CC on the left or call up Broberg slash Gleason instead? As a side note, the Ducks have completely wasted Gibson. He looked like an old man getting up after every save. Mm. Oh, I like this from Eden. There's a couple things there that uh, we should chew on here, Gager. We, we don't know the status of Kulak, right? Did you hear anything on the broadcast? No, we were on no. There? They were trying to grab something, but nothing, nothing, nothing was discussed. All right. So depending on the severity, maybe they do have to roll with uh, a guy like Stetcher on the left side or, or somebody on the left side briefly. Or they would have to get to to Broberg. I know that the intention is to get Broberg up. I'm not sure what the status of Broberg is right now. What do you think the the play is when if if I should say Kulak can't play for a couple of games? Well, I I, I think you look to <clears throat> getting a well. I I think you bring up Broberg because we've talked about it a lot. There's there's going to be eventual injuries on the back end and yep. some someone might have to to step up here um the the benefit is broberg's played in in some of these situations before and he's been playing tons mm -hmm. so i would i i wouldn't uh i wouldn't be surprised if he's the first guy that we that we see um i'm not i don't know the whole situation in bakersfield you mentioned gleason yeah. um too there, there is a possibility with that uh, but again, like I like I said, that Skechard looked or Stetcher looked. I say Skechard. Skechard. Anyway, he's a he's a comfy pair of shoes. Yes, um, certainly. St Stetcher, uh, he looked good. Like it, it it wasn't it wasn't a scenario. Where, okay, oh, he's got to play more. What's going to happen here? Like he fit right in, you know. And seeing him dart into the play, taking you know recognizing the play and and, ta and taking his shot at certain at certain spots um first pass you know he's making 10 to 20 feet foot passes tape to tape which was very encouraging for again a guy that's hasn't got a lot of ice time all yep. of a sudden the first period he's thrown in and he's doing the job so um but to answer your question i think it, it's broberg let get him up get him back and at, at the nhl level and see see where he's at first of all yeah uh, Kulak's injury happened pretty darn early, 49 seconds in. We'll see if there's an update on him from Chris Knobloch. In terms of St uh, Stetcher's game, plus one, almost had that goal, uh, drew the penalty, and uh, three shots on net, three hits, 18.04 time on ice, and then Vinny Deharnay, two assists, plus two, two hits, 21.26 for the big Edmonton D-man. So there you go. There's a bit of a picture from the back end in the order 6-1 win over the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, the Gibson comment by Ian oh. and in his text, you and I were talking about it on the way over here. I said to you, I was, uh, the, the question came up, Daniel Nugent Bowman from The Athletic and I were just talking and we were kind of watching Gibson uh, as the game was going. And he goes, would you trust Gibson to be your guy if you needed a goalie? And I said, no, I don't. I take too many hard miles early in his career. He's only 30 years old. He's going to be 31 soon. But when I floated that to you, Gager, you didn't disagree with me on that. No, unfortunately, I like John Gibson's been a great goalie for, for a number of years. And, but the wear and tear of playing with in that organization and just being, you know, peppered with yeah. rubber consistently, like he has to play out of his mind for the ducks to have a chance of winning hockey games. And that, that wears away at you. Now, looking at his age, 30 years old, I just don't, I think his best years are behind him, especially with the wear and tear. If you're looking at John Gibson now, and I think you were, you're looking at him more so as a Calvin Pickard, to tell you the truth, Tommy. It's, um, you've got your established guy, but you want to give, make sure you have something just in case, but also a guy that can, 
you know, definitely take some of the load and, and make it like almost like a Jonathan Quick kind of scenario. Right. I think that's where John Gibson is now in his career and still an asset. I, I wouldn't be surprised if someone it, it looks at him in that respect and he gets moved. But it's it is there's going to have to be some retention there with with that contract. Yeah, he's got a couple of years left. I think six point four million per year, yeah. if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, okay, let's go to the nasty chat really quickly. I like these; these are funny. Dolphinius says, "My wife is mad because she's cooking turkey, and I already ate duck soup. Mm, <laughs> delicious." Eric Stewart says, "Business side always throws me through a loop. Wish Vinny would sign whatever deal needed to stay with his team." play with McDavid and win a cup. You have your whole life to make money. Gager, <laughs> uh, I, you can speak to this better than I could. Certainly you played in the NHL. You, you had a chance to extend your career for quite a while. You played a lot of pro hockey. Give us the, the NHL players point of view on trying to make bank as much as you can while you do have that window. Well, I mean, there, the thing about Vinny is he has a unique skill set, right? Um, but it, this is a guy like if I'm, if I'm looking at it, I think out of Vinny's eyes too, like he's toiled around in the minors for a long time. Yep. This is without, you know, essentially life changing money at, at this point. Yep. Um, so, and no one knows how long their career is going to last. Like he's, his window has gotten a lot smaller because because of the time in the minors and you know eventually the the race you, you always lose the race against father time and he's closer to the point where his skills are going to diminish than than they then he's going to consistently get better yeah. at this point so he has to look at that as well that's it's tough i've thought about this a lot just uh taking my dog for a walk what's Vinny gonna do um and i hate to say it i know Oilers fans are gonna be upset but i i feel that he's going to make a decision that is best for life after hockey with this yeah. next deal then then it would be for what well, uh, a loyalty type of of deal i if that makes sense tommy no. so i i wouldn't i wouldn't but i wouldn't be mad at him either because the the average length of an NHL hockey player like career is very short. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. So um, get while the getting's good. I think with Vinny, hopefully that's here though. And you it know, could maybe. be. And it could be. I'm not saying that he wouldn't. And I and I know the the Oilers are are quite happy with the with where he's at. So I'm not saying it's not a possibility that he's still an Oiler. But like you alluded to earlier, Tommy, this is a this is a guy with a six, seven defenseman that, that plays 20 minutes a night, plays PK, yep. has some sandpaper, is difficult to play against, um, and he seems to be on the rise. So that's, uh, that's the Oilers would have loved to have him, you know, yep. a, a few years ago. So, but they did, but he just wasn't there yet, you know, but a no. player like, like that. Uh, a unique skill set. The guy's six foot seven. Okay, he's he's uh, a seventh round pick from 2016. Gager. He went 183rd overall, and that's a long shot at that point, right? That's a long shot. So he made it work. Toiled in the ECHL, got a contract, made his way to the AHL, got an AHL contract, and then finally got his two way deal. Made his debut last season. We said it going into the season. Look for Vinny DeHarnay to get a look. And then he passed uh, Marcus Niemelainen on the depth chart. And now here he is playing 104 NHL games after today. <laughs> and uh, we're looking at this and saying, hey, uh, he, he's an NHL player and he's going to want to stay in the league for as long as possible. He's an oiler and let's see what happens uh, in the offseason. Okay, let's go to some more text here. As the Oilers win at 6-1 over the Anaheim Ducks, Tom Gazzola, Joaquin Gage, and YouTube Trev with you here on the Oil Stream Post game show. I'm going to get to this one from Shaggy in St. Albert, who says, Finally, this is how the order should always play against the bottom <laughs> feeder team. Game was never in doubt after the end of the first period. Surprise, Oilers fans did not start the wave in addition to the singing of John Denver. That jinxed the shutout. Now, please show up against the Blues on Monday to keep the streak of complete game, good defense, and effort going. Don't let up. Haven't clinched second in Pacific yet. Still have 
a shot at first appears most likely they're playing Vegas in first round rather than play them in first round uh, because Vegas may be more likely to have a healthier lineup in round two. That's from Shaggy in St. Albert. Peter Texans says John Gibson must hate playing Edmonton. <laughs> yeah. Ed, his head spin engager. Yeah. Like you're reading his body language, right? Well, and plus he's had games against the Oilers in the past where um, I would say like for 30 minutes, 35 minutes, he's been lights out. And like his record, I think like listen, hearing his record tonight, I think now it's, it's nine and nine against the Oilers, I yep. think now. Um, but it was, I, I, I think it was like eight and two, like he dominated yeah. against the Oilers for a long period of time, but he didn't have to the the ducks were on a different level like they were they were way more competitive i think totally. at that point and but now you see him i think it was i think it was last year or maybe it was the beginning he just had a really solid game like i was like to the point where gibson's gonna oiler the goalies but the 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 floodgates opened up connor and leon went nuts and and it just it's 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 got to be so frustrating like Connor's first goal, oh. he 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 did such a good move to 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 fake like he was going to the middle and just turn the D man around, and he's coming with such velocity. And Gibson's a really good he's a he's a really good goal like he's a fantastic goaltender, but his his movement's really good too. But to see him already like lack of a better he's scared of connor with the speed like by the time he connor gets it gibson's in the back of the net because he knows he there's no way he can follow Con if he goes wide right so he's on the goal line and connor just sees that fine i'll just wait yet and put it back the other way shelf like it's connor's ridiculous but to see him do something like that to gibson from the red line uh, yeah he's got to just be Get me out of here. I'm, yeah. I'm tired of this. <laughs> uh, and it's ridiculous how easy McDavid looked, makes that move look. And he's coming in like that, and he's hard on his edges, and he's cutting in, and, and he goes back to his forehand, and he just flicks it in. And I'm like, oh, that's an easy move to make. And then I watch it again. I'm like, no, I'd be breaking my own ankles even trying to do something like that. It's incredible. Like, I don't know Tommy, how you stop that, Gager. No, Tommy, it's it's the it's the crane technique. That's, that's the Mr. Miyagi. When done properly, there's no defense. Um, when you can, if Connor McDavid can come with that much speed, the goalie has to honor it. And what I mean, he has to start moving back. Mm -hmm. Connor goes like he's going wide, and that's why they're so far back because they know they can't follow him across the net, which is ridiculous that yeah. the guy's going that fast. But then he gets them moving, and he just waits. He waits to see what the goalie does. If he doesn't move, he'll go around him. If he starts moving, then he pulls it back and puts it back against the grain the other way. It's complete. It's when he does it and he does it properly. There's no defense. The only thing that's that would help a goalie is bad ice at that point. Maybe he's, he fluffs it, but that's the only thing. Unreal move. Works again tonight against the Ducks. Uh, the Liquid Beaver chiming in says Tommy Gager. I have nothing to critique about this game today, but I just want to comment on your attire, you two brothers are looking sharp. Thank you, Liquid Beaver. Gager looks very good today. He brought his A game. And uh, well, so just did you, to keep up. So hey. did you. You're that, hey, great work today. Like, you've uh, you've put in some time. You you can go to Kelly's. Thank time. you. I, I'll I might drag you with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's go to Spruce Grove. Rick says, boys, how do you uh, do that in the same combo condo? Gager is... Is TG providing the beers? By the way, good job on TV. Your suit rocks. One up on Struddy. Spruce Grove, Rick, brother of Leduc Dan. Uh, you can answer those. So do you do that in the same condo? Yes, you're patched in on your phone. I'm in the studio slash office. You're in my kitchen lock, living room area. And uh, that's how we do it. And then the beers, I mean, you can answer that. Well, we we, we made a pit stop. We just, uh, you know... Tommy and I were we're running on softs. We're throwing on the hards here for the rest of the night. See how far we can go. Um, Love but it. Uh, no, <laughs> Struddy. I think Struddy looked good. I think he looked really good the other night. He, I mean, yeah, Struddy's fantastic. He's like, if anyone gets to meet Jason Strudwick away from like he's funny, but yep. 
it it's a it's the tip of the iceberg of how quick he is and and stuff i'm i'm dying laughing when i yes. when i'm around Strutty. he's he's phenomenal but he's uh, thank you for the for the attire comment Yes, uh, well deserved, and uh, he is the best dressed Swedish man from Edmonton of all time. <laughs> I also have a Dr Jason Strudwick reverse retro New York Islanders jersey in Solid. my in my office. One of one, Gager. You don't <laughs> see a lot of yeah. those. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go back into the inbox. 780-218-9999. This one says, "What has happened to Marcus Niemelainen? Is he an NHL option anymore?" Uh, he's just kind of been passed by others. I'll just quickly answer that. He's been passed by others. They want to get Broberg up and running. They brought Gleason in and, uh, Nima Linen is just kind of settled in that, you know, speaks to depth and, uh, we'll see if he will probably be a black ace called up if the Condors are out and the others are still in the post season. Uh, V power Texan says leave John Denver in Calgary. That's from V power. I appreciate that text. So, uh, there you go. Uh, Epiphany says via the nasty chat, Strutty is someone's spirit animal. Uh, not mine, but someone's. LOL. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's get YouTube Trev in here. Trev, where are you at? Are you around? What's up, boys? What'd you think of today's <laughs> game, pal? Yeah, yeah, it was a great game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was uh, one with not a lot of stress. I was able to sit back and, and just enjoy, and uh, it was, yeah, it was good. I, I liked a lot from what I saw. Oh, Tommy just left there. I think he should be back. Oh, there he is. Okay. Um, yeah, but there, the one player you guys uh, haven't quite t touched on yet, but Corey Perry, I thought he had a lot of good looks tonight. Man, he's still got it. It's still cool to see, right? Yeah, like growing up watching, you know, Corey Perry just terrorize the Oilers for all those years and then just watching him now, like you see those those little glimpses of, you know, why he was an MVP and the the heart or and the, the Rocky Richard Trophy winner as well. He had a lot of good looks tonight. Um, I, I thought Stetcher was pretty solid. Defense as a whole was just awesome. Matthias Eckholm continues to just dominate. Uh, he's looked so good and he has like all season long, but this last two week, uh, you can even say month has just been so impressive from him. So yeah, I thought he looked good. Pickard looked good. Uh, the whole, the whole team really was just, it was just a solid, you know, 60 minutes from everyone. You, you can't really nitpick too much. It was just a, it was a good collective effort tonight. And uh, McDavid now leads the league in points for the first time all season, 125 points. He started, uh, I think it was 80, fifth and now and now he's first so it took him it took him like three or four months but uh, I always had a f figured that he was gonna get uh, back to first and and here we are so the the race is on it's 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 exciting it's it's so exciting to watch and Dreisaitl as well I thought the last game he looked great and when Dreisaitl is really going he's going and like today I think he had that as well his his legs like he's just such a solid skater he really is once he gets going it's, it's hard to stop him watching him protect the puck and he was doing it effortlessly all night long so uh yeah it was just a it was a solid solid win and uh it was it was fun to watch it was i did i didn't stress out once i was just oh this is nice wow. so it's, it's good to see i like it there you go youtube trev with his breakdown of edmonton 6-1 victory over the anaheim ducks sweeping the season series keep those texts coming in 780 218 99 99 Tom Gazzola, Joaquin Gage, and YTT YouTube Trev with you for a little bit longer. We'll go inside the Oilers locker room shortly. And I should mention that portions of this hour brought to you by 100.3 The Bear, Edmonton's best rock. Catch Dusty Nielsen with Uke and McCord weekday mornings. And then check out Jess Jackson on your drive home from work every afternoon. Great to be partnered up with the fine folks over at The Bear. Uh, all right, uh, let's go. Do we have Trev? Do we have audio? Is that ready to go? Yeah, I actually that. just got Connor okay. McDavid and I was working on Matthias Eckholm now, but uh, yeah, we can go to Connor McDavid if that's okay let's with you guys. That. Yeah, so, let's go. Here is Connor McDavid. Put this one away. These games are, you know, can always kind of be, be tricky, I guess, and just thought of being able to do what you guys did today. Uh, yeah, I thought we got off to a really good start. You know, Rico scores that big goal, big play from, uh, from Leo's line. Um, and kind of just, you know, go from there. Um, you know, these games can be tricky, especially if you give them life early in the game. And um, I thought we did a good job of, uh, of eliminating that. And Pix was there for us um, whenever we turned one over. How does Henrique fit in here? Because he's, he seems like he kind of came coming in and fit in seamlessly with you guys. Yeah, he has. He has. Um, both him um, and Sammy and Stetch, mm -hmm. um, just three, first and foremost, like really you know, just great guys. They fit into the room really well um, on the ice. Um, 
you know, their games have blended well with our group and um, they've done every, everything that's been asked of them and um, it's been good. Pulling even with uh, Kucherov and McKinnon in the scoring race, what does that mean? I know it's going to be tight the rest of the way. With you. What does that mean? Um, yeah, I mean, what, yeah, it's nice, I guess. Um, it's a position I've been in many times before and um, we're playing for things bigger than that. Um, we're playing for... Uh, you know, to make sure our game is in order. Um, you know, and we're still playing for positioning. Um, you know, lots of hockey left, 10 games left. You never know what could happen coming down the stretch, and, um, and we'll see what happens that way. Did you know it was a forward you were going down on on your, on your first goal? Like, it could happen pretty quickly. Did you, did you kind of get that sense? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, you're always, you know what's going on out there. You know who you're going up against most times, and... You know, definitely knew that that was a forward and, and uh, might be a little bit of an uncomfortable situation for him. So, yeah, I just try to take him on. There's 10 games left. You can kind of just, you can see the finish line now. Is that, uh, you know, kind of elevate the importance <coughs> of really getting the game in order and, and shoring things up for him? Um, well, yeah, getting the game in order, um, getting your mind right, um, getting those habits down. and, and um, But, like I said, there's still lots to play for in these 10 games. Um, you know, Vegas, LA are still close behind and uh, playing for home ice and you know you never know if Van, Van can stumble maybe you know who knows so we got to win our games that's all we got to do um, we got to keep building our game like we keep saying in here and and uh, yeah, you never know. You guys played so well against Los Angeles Chris was saying yesterday the potential for this to be a trap game the fact that you guys came out right away was that a good sign for this team that you left no doubt? In a game like yeah this? obviously an emotional game against LA always is um, you know, especially this late in the year, playing for position and stuff like that. So um, it was a really big win, and, and uh, you know, but a win like that doesn't mean anything if you don't follow it up on a, on a day like today. So um, I thought our group was ready to go um, right from the jump and, and did what we had to do. A couple goals for Connor McDavid today and an assist. And uh, I, Gager, I, I know he's like, what does it mean to me? And, and he will never <coughs> tell it to you the way he actually feels, but it does matter, obviously. <laughs> I, I think the appropriate question there, and you'd have to ask him off camera or without microphones, is like, hey, I, like, did you score that one because you wanted to or because you kind of had to? You know, <laughs> I, like the guys, we were joking that he's toying with the league right now, and I think we saw a bit of that today. Yeah, the, the, he could have scored in the power play in the second period. Yeah. He had a wide open, the top half of the net. The Gibson, but he was looking for someone. He wanted an assist. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's toying with it, but you know, Tommy. I've, over the past few years, I haven't I haven't liked the fact that the Oilers were playing for where Connor had the the you know getting it to a hundred points in the shortened season, or you know the 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 sixty goals, fifty goals, these types of things. Um, I like that Zach Hyman's like it's done for him. You don't yep. have to worry anything from this point forward is just a bonus with Zach Hyman. I guess you're still kind of look at that hundred assist season for Connor. Um, but like he says, yeah, they're playing for positioning and things like that. But again, he wants to be the leading scorer of the league. He, yeah. he alluded to it a little bit there saying, this is a position that I've been in before. It's he is competing with against guys that he doesn't play against on a regular basis. And there's an internal competition for him right there, especially mm -hmm. I think it's even more impressive f coming from where he was to where he is now. Like that's, that's MVP caliber any day of the week. Yep. Um, and I, I, like, I like the fact that Connor McDavid has, you know, we've all watched the Last Dance documentary with, with Michael. G that's... Some of that stuff can just extra motivation. Not that yep. he needs any, but if he can put a little, you know, an, another couple sticks in his craw of where other guys are, and he wants to be known as the best player on the planet. I, but he might not say it, but I'll tell you, that's what that's what he wants to be known as. And um, whatever can motivate him even more to be even better is a great thing for the Edmonton. Man, he is uh, on fire, tied with Nikita Kucherov for the lead in the National Hockey League in points with three tonight. I give him 100 and uh, what does he have, 20, 124 now or 125? 125, I believe it is. Yeah. yeah, and I'll say this. The only other guy that probably had a better afternoon than Connor McDavid 
is the next guy we're going to hear from, and that is Matthias Ekholm. And I'll explain to you why after we hear from him. Tricky sometimes when you have a team that has nothing to lose against, you know, playing against. And you guys need the points. Thought so of being able to get the job done. Um, yeah, I think a good start helps for sure. Um, I thought we came out flying in the first, um, played really well, and when the game gets out of hand early, it's uh, obviously easier to manage them. And then their team, as you're saying, they'll stick around if they can. But um, I thought we did a good job managing them in the first and kind of put them away early, and, and, and then we just played from there. You guys had a, you know, maybe a few games where you weren't quite starting on time. Seems like you've made a pretty good effort to get through that, get past that as a trade. Yeah, I mean, it's it's 82 games in a season, and we're not going to be perfect throughout all of them. And there's going to be times where we start slow. There's going to be times where we finish um, slow and, and what, what what have you. So I, I think it's nice to see that we're getting closer to a full 60 minute here coming down the stretch. And we know how important that's going to be in the playoffs. So uh, yeah, obviously, I've liked our starts here lately. You've been pushing some, some pretty impressive offensive numbers lately. Do you just Sometimes you feel it a little bit more as it bounces. Like, how do you sort of explain the the run you've been on here? Um, well, I I try to play the same way every uh, every game, but um, I think a big part of it has been I've been feeling really good lately. I feel like my uh, had some some bumps and bruises to start the season, and those have kind of faded away a little bit. So to be able to skate while out there and to kind of just work on it, and, and then obviously when you get a couple. Um, contributions offensively you, you tend to kind of get in the zone a little bit and, and you find the puck better and you shoot it more and where you when you're supposed to and, and, and they've been finding the net so I'm, I'm happy to contribute but I think my game still is maybe not uh, just focused on the offensive side it's a it's a two-way game so I'm trying to do trying to help as much as I can not really to be honest with you I think um, you get into a rhythm pretty quick. It's the first couple of shifts you just got to get through them and, and get, get to breathing, and then uh, you just kind of keep going. And it's uh, it's more of a it gets a different flow, and it's also it's actually kind of easier sometimes too. You just kind of keep going, keep coming. So um, I didn't think it it was that big a deal. No, nope. no, nope. that's I got one cheap one on the the last one there, but uh, no, it's it's obviously nice. You'd rather be plus than minus, so I'll take it and we'll move on. Is any surprise in your mind that, that Connor McDavid's now top the scoring race? No, not at all. But uh, at the same time, I know he was uh, obviously we all were struggling early on. So the fact to see him on top right now is pretty awesome. And you guys have seen his games um, in the last three months. It's been unbelievable how he's been carrying us. So, I mean, he's, he's the best player in the world. And there's no shock to my mind whatsoever that he's there. It's been a team effort from mid-November onward. But what role are you talking about off the ice and, and around the room has he played in, in getting this team to where it is now compared to the start, obviously? I feel like he's been the same guy throughout, and that's that's a strength because uh, if you're gonna, I mean, every season goes up and down. Obviously, we had a real down to start, and I thought he carried himself the way he does as we are right now, where we're playing well and everything's clicking. So I think that is one of his strengths as a, as a leader in this room. He doesn't get too high on himself, or he doesn't get too low on himself either. So um, he's a tremendous leader, and he leads us every night. So uh, we're happy to have him. Do you see nights when he's saying, "Okay, I'm passing tonight." Tonight looked like he was shooting. Can you tell early in the games, or does it I feel like he's always a passer first, but uh, it's nice to see him go um, scoring some goals too. I think he's got uh, opportunities to shoot it even more, but he's looking for his teammates. So I mean, it's it's uh, some nights, yeah, he tends to shoot it more. Some some nights he tends to pass it more. So um, he does both really well. So we're happy with either. All right, there's Matthias Ekholm, and I said beforehand uh, that he had a pretty darn good game. A goal to this plus five, four shots, three hits, 25-59 time on ice for the big Viking. And uh, that was because Brett Kulak only played 49 seconds. I have a quick update for you on Kulak. This comes via Daniel Nugent Bowman. I'll read the text or the tweet. And DNB says, Oilers coach Chris Knobloch said, Brett Kulak appears to be okay, but will be reevaluated later. Today and tomorrow, Kulak will join the team on their upcoming two-game road trip. And uh, Kulak was hit in the head with a puck in his first shift and was limited to 49 seconds of ice time. Um, Gager, you were giggling a bit with some of what uh, the big Viking, Matthias Ekholm, had to say. Why were you giggling? No, just the, the way that, you know, they 
they try to understate what Connor does. You know, they don't want to go overboard like we normally do all the time. But what we do, it's hard not to, Tommy. How how do you not when arguably this is like when I I look back and I kind of after Matias said a few things there, I I thought about the game against the Kings and how leading by example and mm -hmm. the, the broadcast. Louis DeBrusque did a, a great description of what it's like playing against Connor McDavid when he's when he's got a little bit of a mean on, right? Like it's it's a it's a bullet hitting you. Like he's so quick, so fast, and when he's finishing his checks, it's even more dangerous, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't you don't even think he's there. Like the the Kings, there's some hate obviously against that team. He, Connor McDavid's alluded to it numerous times. But you can see he, he puts a little bit more effort into finishing his checks against certain teams. Yep. So even in, in that aspect, like we, 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 we marvel at the offensive like ma mastery that Connor McDavid has. But the, and we've talked for years of how it seems like he's come back every year and, and added something to his game. And I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't there before, but I think that that mean meanness i guess yeah i can't think of another word but the way he can he can he can finish checks and get and play the game at a at a highly physical level as well as the the highest offensive level is miraculous i arguably this is the best connor mcdavid we've seen um from what he's been able to accomplish this year uh, it, 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 he's, uh, I've run out of words. I don't know what to say. You're not going to get an argument from me because, uh, he's in the prime of his career and he's doing things that only three other guys in the history of the NHL have done, which is absolutely insane. Something I never would have just thought of. Oh, what's McDavid going to try to do this year? Well, Tom, he's going to go get a hundred assists because why he wants to, and then he'll happen to get 30 goals, even though he led the league in scoring last year, but he won't really want 30 goals. He'll just score those 30 goals because he's in the right place at the right time, or he's faster than everybody, or he just happens to get a breakaway. Uh, yeah, that's the, the mastery that is Connor McDavid and you summed it up nicely. So I will not argue that for one single second. All right. We have some business to get to, and I love this. Uh, I said, YouTube Trev, be ready to do this. And then he replied with, don't judge me for this one. I won't, but the former goalie might. So uh, without <laughs> further ado, let's go to the big save of the game presented by Christopher Boyle, business owner, tax saver. Chris Boyle strategically works with both businesses and families with strategic planning and risk management like a goalie, like a walkie engage, protecting the net, shielding your paycheck from unforeseen events like illness or hospitalization and ensuring your family's financial stability in the face of unexpected circumstances. For a chance to win playoff tickets, did you see how expensive those bad boys are? Uh, scan the QR code in the corner of your screen if you're watching, and if you're listening, visit ChristopherBoyle.net slash postgameshow. ChristopherBoyle.net slash postgameshow for a chance to win playoff tickets. And without further ado, let's go to the big save of the game, Trev, uh, we are judging you. Okay, well, I told you not to. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, so I'm not going to lie. There was, like, a save two minutes into the game, and I was like, oh, like, that's not a bad save. Uh, Calvin Pickard made it. But I'm like, surely, you know, I, I was going to take note of it, but I'm like, ah, I, I'm sure there's going to be a way, way bigger save in the game. And it turns out there wasn't. Uh, from John Gibson, I didn't really see a heck of a whole lot for saves. Uh, Calvin Pickard, uh, the only save I could really, I was like, ah, that was a solid save. I think he had, you know, a lot of his saves were solid but I don't think there was like, oh my gosh, that's the craziest save I've ever seen. So I do apologize for that. It's not for my lack of trying. It's for the lack of, uh, I guess, offense for the Anaheim Ducks because there there wasn't a whole lot to pick from. I, there was 15 minutes left in the third period. Former Oiler William Legison, he comes down. He's in the slot. It was, uh, you know, it was a great A, you know, scoring opportunity. You could say he shoots it. Calvert Pickard with a, you know, pretty solid save. So that's that's what I got for today, boys. If, uh, if you're in the nasty chat and you know the save I'm talking about, definitely let me know. Uh, because yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. That's that's all I got. So, but that's uh, the the big save of the game. Was it that big? Maybe not. But it was solid. So I'll leave it at that. Gager, do you approve? 
Yeah, it's uh, that's okay, Trev. I, next time I'll I'll explain saves to you more. I mean, I need that. Yeah, you've you you do need it. You need you need some help. But um, <laughs> okay. that's what that's why I'm there, buddy. Just I'm a resource. Okay. I'll Reach I'll out. shoot you a text. I'll shoot you a ne- uh, text go. next game. There we go. Yeah, yeah you it. you have my number. You 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 can only phone in certain times and stuff. But <laughs> okay. It's okay, sounds good, Gage. Uh, Thank you. Okay, we're going to leave the uh, QR code up to scan if you want to enter to win playoff tickets courtesy of Christopher Boyle. Uh, It is the big save of the game. We'll leave that up there for a couple more seconds. And then if you're listening, like I said before, you can check out ChristopherBoyle.net slash postgame show. Uh, The Oilers 6-1 winners over the Ducks. I've got a couple of texts that I want to get to. Gager, this one's specifically for you via Coach Mike. Oh, no. And it says, Gager, would you give Pickard an extra start this week? That's from Coach Mike. And just if you're looking at the schedule, Edmonton has four games, Monday night in St. Louis, Wednesday night in Dallas, Friday at home against the Avs, Saturday on the road in Calgary. What say you, Joaquin? Um, yeah, it, it's so hard, Mike, because the – you have the Canucks, it, like you can see them. You know they were so far ahead, but you've you've kind of reeled them into it. I guess it depends on if the Ducks can actually do something miraculous tomorrow afternoon. Mm. Um, you know, and, and really make use of this game in hand. That's where you kind of look. Well, maybe I go with Skinner because he does give you the best chance. So not that God. I mean, Pickard's been unbelievable, but and. In, you can make a case where you need to give Skinner some rest. Like right? these are the last ten games, mm-hmm. and I think that's beneficial, at, especially not always, but the way the Oilers are right now, where you've gotten solid starts from your number two guy, you want him feeling good about his game as well, right? So you have an opportunity to possibly. I know that I'm looking at that Stars game. Yep. Only the the only reason I'm looking at the Stars game because it's a little bit further down, but for to to have the confidence from the coaching staff to say you're playing against the Dallas Stars tonight, we need two points. That not only that, that gives you confidence in itself, but producing a win or a good, like I'd say good performance, but producing a win that's going to make you feel even better because he's in a tough position. I I've been in that position before where. You know, if things go into the into the pooper here, you're the man, yeah. and you're. This is a team that that wants to, you know, have names engraved on cups at the end of this thing. So there's a lot like you have to prepare, like you're the you're going to play at each and every game. So, and to get him into that mindset where he's playing against the league's best, I think can, I would like to see him play that game. I don't mind that at all, to be honest with you. Um, veteran guy, you would think automatically he should be in that mindset, but to actually put him in there and give him those Just, situations. It's one thing to think it. There's yep. another thing to do it. Right. Yep. Sharpen up your knife kind of thing. Be be ready. Yeah. I uh, don't disagree with that at all. All right, let's go back to the text line. It's interesting. Uh, some interesting thoughts coming from some different angles. So we had the text from Coach Mike about Pickard. Here's one from JR in Calgary who says, Hey gents, how many potential hall of famers are currently on this team? In your opinion, cheers from JR in Calgary. Well, I could tell you two for sure. Um, <laughs> after that, go gauge your, like who else? Maybe? Um, I think we got to look into a crystal ball a little bit. Um, but it, I don't know. Matthias Ekholm's, um, like international play, the word he's done with with Sweden. Yeah. Um. You, you know, th- this is where thank thank God we're getting back to more best on best scenarios. Yeah. Right. I think like all there's certain players that have played in the NHL that haven't won cups that are really deserving to be in the Hall of Fame. It's the Hockey Hall of Fame. It's not the NHL Hall of Fame, and what they've done internationally is is miraculous. So. I mean, who knows when? I'll say it. Who knows when Stuart Skinner's said and done here? Good point. You know, he's our. I think he he has with this year where the team was and what he's been able to accomplish. 
I think that you got to consider him to be one or two on Canada's national team at this point. Probably. Um, and if and he's a young guy, and if he can, you know, over the next eight years or ten years, if he pulls in two gold medals and keeps doing what he's doing, that that's a hard thing to say that he doesn't belong in there if he can accomplish, you know, what what Carey Price did. Uh, I see a few texts and YouTube, Trev, uh, bringing up the same name. Who is it? Who is it, Trev? Good old Corey Perry. He yes. might, uh, might I don't know there. if, he, yeah, I don't know if he'll his first be, yeah. ballot, but like he's, I remember he's when it. they first, first got him, um, they were saying he's one of, if not the most winningest player in NHL history or something like that. Like he's won at mm. every level all, it, as far as champions go. He, he like, he's an elite company on that aspect. So I definitely think you could throw uh, Corey Perry in that. Uh, he's a he's in that group for yeah, sure. Yeah, no, no, I should have met. I, I, I thought of him. It's automatic. What? You yeah. look at the resume. It's it's automatic. He's in, he's in, he's a Hall of Famer. Gager, the the Stuart Skinner thing. I am of the same mind as you. And when he brought it up, I was like, okay, because I was gonna say, hey, you never know. And and there might be people that are listening or watching and going, come on, Stuart Skinner. We have to keep in mind this is his second yeah. full NHL season. Calder finalist was an All Star in his rookie season. Um, continues to have a, a very strong year statistically. I know it didn't start out great for anyone with the Oilers outside of a couple of guys, but I think it was earlier in the week, the NHL put out a stat and it was like top 10 goalies this season. And Stu Skinner was number five Yeah, from the, whatever stats that they had used. Uh, he was the fifth best goalie according to the national hockey league. And he's been damn good. I know he has a great team in front of him, but the best goalies, Take advantage of that, and they have over the course of the history of the game, and he's doing it, which is great. So let's see if he can continue to build that body of work. All right, we have to get to our final order of business, and that, of course, is the Damon Bunting REMAX Elite Player of the Game. Damon Bunting, consistent, top-producing realtor in Greater Edmonton and among Western Canadian REMAX realtors. He and his team would love to help you find that right home or make the move from your current home. Check him out, damonbunting.com, or visit his Instagram at Damon Bunting Real Estate YouTube. Trev, take it away. Uh, yeah, just going to keep this short and sweet for tonight, gents. But uh, a lot to pick from tonight, like I said. Uh, there's a few honorable mentions. Thought Fogel was pretty solid. Leon as well. Um, we talked about Matthias Ekholm. You know, just a huge plus five. That's just incredible. Uh, not another Oiler was plus four tonight. So, yeah, just a whale of game for him. But uh, I'm just going to go with Connor McDavid just for the reason that, yes, he had a three-point game, which is super impressive. But more so the storyline of him just, you know, coming back, coming back from, you know, being almost out of the the top 100 to now being tied uh, for first uh, and it, it's going to be crazy like it's it's just insane that uh, he's putting together just this the numbers or whatever it's it's honestly insane so Connor McDavid uh, just another unbelievable season another unbelievable game and uh, he is the Damon Bunting player of the game simply put I, I would have said it at home go ahead Gager I, I wish fans could uh, this is this is one of those things where I remember watching a game, we were playing in Colorado and Lemieux came back and we were all watching the game and I think he scored in his first shift. Yes, um, on Cujo. Yeah, no, this this wasn't, uh, we weren't playing against them. We were... No, are you talking about when he came back for like after retirement? Yeah. That was against Toronto and Cujo was the, the goalie. Oh, well, it was, you're right, yeah. you're right. Sorry, sorry. I, I completely... Yeah, no, that was, and we were all sitting there and marveling at the greatness of, of Mario. And it would be a great thing. And we talked about the behind the scenes types of things that you would see. And to hear how other players um, reference the best and, and just go, how is he doing this? Like it's, it, I would really like to see a lot of the other games tonight when guys show up to the rink and they look at Connor's, leading the league in scoring now and they, it's amazing and when you get that when you hear your peers talk about you in such a glowing light mm -hmm. um i think that would be cool for a fan's point of view to hear how other players talk about other players and in, in, in that type of you know saying how good they are uh okay we got a couple texts to wrap things up uh my dad got in the text line and i'm just like come on man I'll read that text shortly, but I want to get to this one. 
uh, where was it? Somebody asking if Nugent Hopkins, it was uh, shuts via the nasty chat, would be considered a Hall of Famer. Instinctually, I, I, don't, I don't think so. He had a great season last year, 104 points. Donnie M. Texan says, Tom's buddy, why is Ryan N., Ryan Nugent Hopkins, a non-factor on this team? Give me his contributions on the last five games or just block me. Every player has had an impact. Um, I'll let Gager talk about the contributions Ryan Nugent Hopkins has to this team because I always boast about him. I see the little things, but Gager, you played in the National Hockey League. I did not, so my opinion well, is nowhere near as valid. Is he? I think he's mentioning like score sheet, not on the score sheet. Like he scored a huge goal against the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah. Right. Um, but again, this is just watch him the whole game. Watch what he does. Watch in the crucial areas when he gets the puck and how efficient he is with 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 how he manages it. He ne very rarely does he put himself in a position to make a mistake. And he covers up things that are happening. Like he'll be he'll be defensively responsible. You can't Ryan Nugent Hopkins jersey will be on the Oilers Hall Wall of Fame yep. at, a, at some point. Um, definitely, I can almost guarantee it. Um, but there's there's just so many intangible things that he brings that unfortunately you don't realize until he's hurt or out of the and out of the lineup. That's when you're like, oh my god, we need the uh, Nuge does this yeah. on a regular basis. So if you're thinking that way, I would. I mean, it's not a great thing to do when you watch a hockey game is just focus on one player because you want to be entertained, but. Watch him every time he's on the ice. Watch what he does, and then you'll go, "Oh, okay, that's that's why he's a regular and one of the best players in the NHL." Ryan Nugent Hopkins today plus one, one shot, one hit, sixteen twenty four time on ice. He does have sixty one points in seventy one games this season. Probably ends up in that sixty five to seventy range unless he goes on a tear and gets to seventy points. I know it's not one hundred and four like he had last year. But, uh, man, he's been uh, just rock solid for this team for a very, very long time. And uh, I, I will always, you know, say, like, this guy is a key cog. And the players speak very highly of him, not because they want to, but because they have to. And then, on top of that, they do want to. You got to right. say, Tommy, too, sorry. Okay. But you got to say that there's been a fundamental shift in the way that, you know, the, the core group of guys have operated this season, mm -hmm. right? I, I, I think. Like during that stretch where they won 16 games, they weren't their their game management was at a different level. They weren't always pressing to score that next goal. Yeah, they were they were being responsible. And I'm I'm at a certain vintage where I I knew the switch. I saw the switch in superstars, and this is Medano, Sakic, Iserman. These guys were scoring 120, 130 points in a season. Yep. And then all of a sudden their teams got way more competitive, but then you looked at the totals of these guys, it was it was 95 points. It was 105 points. There yep. was a there was a conscious shift from offensive to that 200 foot player and you talk to any GM in the league, they would have Ryan Nugent Hopkins on their on their team in a heartbeat. From yep. what he does. Hey, took a haircut to sign long term. He will probably end his career as an oiler. I sure hope so, selfishly. And uh, I don't hide it. I root for the guy. I've liked him since day one when he came to the team. Um, he, Gager, his name and number will go up in the yeah. Oilers Hall of Fame for sure. And uh, <laughs> you can't say enough good things about a kid who uh, worked his ass off to make it to the National Hockey League, become a first overall pick, and has been a very good oiler for a very very long time all right I, go ahead go ahead oh no i i was with my uh former teammate and junior at the oilers game a few weeks ago he uh he coached the portland winter hawk winter hawks he coached the uh calgary hitmen and he uh we were we were talking about nugent hopkins when he was coach of the hitmen and he just he hates ryan nugent hopkins because he said he just buried him like it was it was a men amongst boys and they he just dominated the game uh, great I think, stories i know who you're talking about and uh not surprised to hear that all right i'm gonna t read my dad's text and I'm, I'm gonna make a comment my dad added no need to read it 
but uh, it says, what was the time of possession for Edmonton? It looked like they had the puck three quarters of the game. I tried finding it. I looked on natural stat trick. Uh, my dad knows full well I am terrible at mathematics, <laughs> and I think he was putting me on the hot seat there. <laughs> so they owned the puck all game long. Your instincts are right. Your eye test was good, Reno. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the text. And we're going to wrap it up with this one from Coach Mike. It says, happy Easter to everyone at EST. And all the listeners, cheers, Coach Mike. Gager, I'm going to ask you one last question. You're the Oilers going into this two-game road trip. Starts in St. Louis on Monday, ends in Dallas on Wednesday. Uh, what's the focus for this team? I think you got to – there's little moments that you you figure out what, you know, to self-motivation. I think you got to look at the finishing first in the Pacific, right? Obviously, one game at a time here, but um, the – there is an opportunity to, to, to situate yourself where you can grab home ice advantage for, depending on the other division, but yep. for, the, for the bulk of the playoffs. And I think that, can, that bodes well for the Oilers just because they've been such a good team at home recently. Absolutely crazy considering they started the year 2-9-1, now 45-23-4, and four, four points back of the idle Vancouver Canucks who get the Anaheim Ducks tomorrow. The Canucks have dropped two in a row. We'll see where this thing goes. Gager, fantastic work as always, my friend. A huge thank you for filling in for Cass. Great work on the broadcast today. And uh, YouTube, Trev, excellent stuff as always, too. A big thank you to everyone who tuned in, texted in, whether it was on Hello Hockey or the Oil Stream pre and post game show. Have yourselves a great Easter long weekend. For Gager and Trev, I'm Tom Gazzola saying take care. We'll see you on Monday.